What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. So, y'all, we are about to get into the saga, all right, of who the F did I marry? This is on Tick Teasy, and it's going viral, so you know we about to get into it. So let's get it. I had to let it play a little bit to see what I was getting into, but it's good. <clears throat> Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the f*** did I marry? And the introduction is self-explanatory. We don't have to do that. Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th <laughs> of 2020. <clears throat> Thank you. We met on Facebook dating site, and we also met... That's already a red flag. Oh, okay. ...on <laughs> Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um, under two different names. So one... One was his actual name and the other one was a variation like a nickname um that he called himself different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag by the uh, way because hello you will notice in this story I called it the United Nations of red flags it is so many red flags that I mean you would have thought I was colorblind because I ignored all of them so I see anyway back to the story we met around March 4th we exchanged phone numbers he called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time in the first phone call he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California from San Diego okay. his job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia okay I'm not gonna say the name and so we also talked about his childhood he told me um, he grew up in Philly he's from Philly both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. Okay. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. Okay. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone. I like it. Okay. He lying already. Bit. All we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this, and he just and he lying to a cop. Okay, got that it. was like <clears throat> wow, you know. So you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um. Also, in that phone call, he explained to me that. <laughs> He um, used to play football. Mm -hmm. He explained that he used to play arena football. <clears throat> yeah. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know we don't about either, NFL. Man. I know about college. Go dogs. But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, Oh, okay. You know, like, good for you. I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So. I ain't gonna lie. Half of us don't either, friend. Half of us don't either. I'm telling you right now. He told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing. Be and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying. Right now I'm in Gwinnett County. But I'm trying to look for a house ideally in atlanta like brookhaven um sandy springs he was like i i really would like to move out there and so i thought you know this is that's great you know you're looking to get a house you just moved here he was like i don't really know too too many people here because i spend all my time at work and you know this job is really demanding right so that was our first phone call we talked more he talked a lot which Took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, Until they lie. <laughs> he eventually bad, yeah. asked me out on a date. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. 
Okay. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived, Cumberland. lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory and over Cumberland. at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs. He played you. <clears throat> he played you. You went from Clayco to Perimeter. Well, you should have went to Cumberland. Because Cumberland is closer for you. And that would be the halfway mark for him, for sure. He played you. Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited. Like, I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully, he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully, he looks like his pictures. So, on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom. And oh no, I, that was that. Uh, nah, <laughs> I lost control of my car. Thank God that this. Well, not thank God, but I knew what to do, so I did not crash. But my tire blew out. So I called him, and I said, "Hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way." That was a sign from Jesus Himself, telling you, "Don't go, friend. Don't go." Off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused. He got quiet and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are. Drop your pen. So I dropped the pen and he came to the gas station, came to the gas station, got out the car and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a, attractive because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, um, Is he really? Might have got them knees done. But all right, continue. Oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he, is, that he was divorced. Um, and that his ex-wife, they had, she had um, two children, a boy and a girl who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about 20. And he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so, you know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. Okay. So this is just setting the stage. Again, that first conversation was, we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, mm -hmm. I would think people talk about in the first conversation. Right. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, I found a, play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like, you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to... Um, he followed me to the to the tire place and then helped me get a tire, paid for it. Okay. So I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe... Man, y'all not paying for tire? You know, I'm mind my business. Okay. The vibe was good. So anyway, I get, the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory over in Perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just this. He love bombing. That would have happened in my mind. He love bombing. Mm, 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 mm. Continue. 
oh my god I had butterflies that that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies so I had butterflies and um, we go in there's a long wait and so we sit outside and we just talk and the conversations great and this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for he tells me you know I'm I believe at the time he was 42 he was like I want to get married and it'd be for real he's like my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away and I want that I want marriage family a house like that is what I want he's like I'm you know I'm as a man I'm ready to get married but I want it to be for real because the first time you know it really hurt me when she cheated on me so he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear um and so he was like what is it that you want and I said pretty much the same thing I was like I'm ready to get married definitely want to have a family and <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend so we both put on y'all was hopeless romanticizing like a motherfucker all right able that we wanted marriage and this is the end of part one okay okay <clears throat> so my synopsis to part one already is the red flags were there they were just fumigating out in the air first of all he he loved bombed her on a whole nother level i feel like because grabbing her hand that's tough I, I i'm only saying that because most people don't do that. You do give a hug. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Don't get me wrong. It depends on how long y'all been talking. Da, da, da. But it don't seem like they've been talking that long. Him changing the tire is top tier. Because, you know, that's why she was so shocked. A lot of men don't, you know, really give a damn. Or they call AAA or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Not too many men out here doing manly, manly things these days. Argue with your mother. Anyway, um, and... It, I'm not going to lie, the whole, his whole family upbringing sounds like it's a lie. And the uh, arena football, absolutely don't believe the arena football. I'm, at this point, I'm going to have to dissect the lies. But anyway, girl, I'm into it. Let's, that's part one. Let's go to the next one. All right. Who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established oh. we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed. We joked. We talked about people, which um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song by the, t well, by the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. Oh, and girl. And I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. No, 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 no. So the anyway, sign that you got was from Jesus with the, uh, with the, with the tire. That's what I didn't say in part one. The sign that she got was from the Lord with that tire. But God be with her. She's still here. Okay. Let's continue. We ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. Uh -huh. So during this conversation, Ooh, he was working, he again baby. is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, mm -hmm. how he went out there. He mm -hmm. went to San Diego State. He played football for San Diego State. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about how, you know, life what he loved it out there so he stayed um that's when he joined the company um and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that while he was doing arena football the team that he was on won a championship uh -huh. but again keep in mind i don't know anything about arena football <clears throat> so i was like okay i didn't know that they had championships and he was like you know he got a little offended like yeah they got championships and you know he was on that team so he talked to me about how he worked at apple 
he worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon, I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it, a lie. So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with mm. that will come back later. Oh, girl. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Right. Yes, I went home. We ended up I'm talking, glad you did. talking and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half COVID. weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red <clears throat> Lobster. Um, I don't even, I, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at, at his place, house, uh... which he had like a studio <clears throat> type of situation. Like it clearly where he was staying. Um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment, but he kept telling me like, this is temporary because I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me, he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house so i was just like okay this is definitely temporary like he's not trying to stay here long term and she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry. You know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. Okay. I read it. All right. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, are you, we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot, but this was a mistake I made. Okay. Cause so ladies, baby. caution moment. The tire was the caution for me. During one of our dates, because um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, nothing physical or anything like that. Just two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. He was in a studio. Now, I'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened. So some, t some things I'm probably gonna insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn this off? No, okay, I still need that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um probably made his eyes go oh shit she's a keeper she got this three bedroom two and a half bath townhouse and i'm in like a little studio yeah let me let me let me go ahead and pursue this what i need to do to quarantine here the decision not you done provided a good quarantine house lord have mercy was made quarantine at my house he was shopping for her before she even knew he was shopping for her. so <sighs> the state went on lockdown he came and stayed with me um in my home and for the most part be in the initial beginning it was fine it was it was fine the reason why i hesitate is because i grew up in the church 
So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of, bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And mm. now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband. Like, it was it was a struggle for me because mm. I knew better. And, I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up, it was like that. It was not sitting right with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not. Want I feel to. you. None of us did. As some, we all quarantined with somebody. So there we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent, because my rent at the time was less than a $1,000. Um, he paid the utility bills. And, on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, <laughs> And so he paid he paid all the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not this is where So then on top of that, he came in paying bills as if he had it to love bomb again. This was pocket bombing at that point. It's not gonna make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Cause this was still March. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, he's helping to cook and clean, and then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him, or is he going to buy a house where it's for us? Because we are going to try to make this thing work, be official, get married, have a family. So the question now on the table is, what are we going to do? Because I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. I refused <clears throat> to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So Damn. the decision was made. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us he was like this is how much i was approved for that's when he showed me the chase paperwork um it was a letter stating that he and it had the chase emblem at the top he showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and all right who the fuck did i marry Part 700 and something thousand two damn all right so I'm going to end this right here as part two. I'm going to make my own little series with it. If y'all enjoy it, let me know. I'll keep bringing it to y'all. But yeah, this is getting good already. This is really good. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah.